Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it's going to be an updated Pendulum Edition deck profile for YCS Atlanta. This is the build that I played at YCS Atlanta. Even though I only played through four rounds, that was not due to me doing poorly. I was actually 3-1 at the end of round four. I decided to drop and hang out with friends because I never really intended on entering the event to begin with. I did zero testing for Atlanta, essentially, with this deck. I, I do, It's very hard for me to get invested in any event that happens in Atlanta, Georgia, because I am 20 minutes away from the event hall. And I, it's very hard for me to wake myself up early on a Saturday, drag myself out of bed after I've already been dealing with bullshit throughout the week, and go to play Yu-Gi-Oh!, which is already a stressful occurrence if you're trying to do well. So it's never something I can get invested in. If I'm going to an out-of-state trip, I'm a tourist, I can hang around in the city, I can do all that sort of stuff. In Atlanta, it's very hard for me to get invested. So usually I don't take the YCSs in Atlanta that seriously, unless I'm just fiending for some Yu-Gi-Oh!, but I had a lot of friends that were coming in from out of town that I was, you know, excited to see. And so I needed something to occupy my time for the first, you know, four to five hours of the event while I waited for them to go X2 or X3 and drop. So I decided to enter the event. Now, I didn't want to enter with World Chalice because I was just going to get very upset. So I was just going to, you know, actually just not show up and show up later in the day and, like, hang out with friends that were also showing up that weren't playing to just hang out with the other people. But one of my subscribers and friends, Eric Gertsen, from out of state, he talked to me, and I said, I don't have a deck that I'd want to even play in the event. I want to play Pendulums if I play anything, because that deck's so cool to like play around with, and I have some theories that I want to test. And he said, what are you missing? And I gave him a list of the Mythical Beast cards and Electromites and stuff, and he said, I got all of this that you're missing. Come see me at the event, and I'll let you borrow them. And I was like, damn, there went my only excuse. So I did at least sleeve this deck up, built it, entered it in the event. Went 3-1 going in after uh, round 4, dropped, didn't really care, wasn't really invested. I probably could have kept playing, but I was also tired because I didn't sleep the night before because I was hanging out with people that came in from out of town, all that sort of stuff. But so yeah, he lent me the cards. He's currently, you know, back home, so I obviously don't have those cards anymore. Uh, but I printed uh, proxies of everything for this deck profile. So anyway, this is a 40-card list. I actually really liked how it performed. Um, even me being, like, literally falling asleep at the table playing Yu-Gi-Oh!, uh, I was still, you know, I'm very good with combo decks, extreme combo decks, like I commit shit to memory, like, for stuff like this, and I was able to play really well, uh, so I, I was still beating people half asleep, which, you know, wild, uh, but <laughs> my main deck was Triple Wisdom Eye, uh, Triple Black Fang Magician, Triple Harmonizing Magician, Triple Oaf Dragon, uh, and Triple Purple Poison, like, just 15 Magicians, uh, the only card I'm considering cutting is the third Oaf, um, I wanted my hands to be very samey in terms of, like, I wanted consistent, like, amounts of large amounts of magicians. Uh, and Black Fang's broken, so, like, Black Fang's always a three of. Um, and Purple Poison is, like, how you out cards and boards in the mirror very effectively, as well as, like, uh, it outs Masterpiece, uh, whether it's on, uh, like, uh, monster. If it's not on monster uh, protection, this outs it. Um, if it's not on spell protection, Black Fang outs it. Uh, with its scale effect, so like I wanted to, you know, have maximum quantities of those because I was expecting people to at least be playing dumbass masterpiece decks. Uh, Oaf Dragon is the only card that like you never really want to draw two of. Uh, you want to just draw one because it works really well with like your first Electromite summon. Uh, because like you just, you know, you get whatever like magician you had to normal summon to go into the combo back. Um, so like it just makes your uh, first Electromite literally cost like a card, a singular card, and then Astrograph takes away the other card that it. Um, that it needed um, to be uh, used for anyway. So, like, it becomes a f your first selection might becomes free if Oaf Dragon is in your scale when you started making it. Uh, but basically, like, it's just something that I'd probably rather play a different card in the place of the third Oaf Dragon. Uh, a card that I couldn't find uh, anyone with a spare copy of was one copy of Rescue Hamster. I really wanted to play one copy of Hamster uh, because I don't like that card in multiples, but I love what it does mid combo. But anyway. Uh, three copies of Astrograph and the Stargazer, and then three copies of Chronograph and the Time Gazer. This is just obviously correct. Like if you're if you're playing a Pendulum deck that's trying to make Electromites, and you're not playing these cards, no matter what the Pendulum deck is, it could be any Pendulum deck. If you're not playing like the full suite of these, then you must not be trying to make Electromite hard enough. You're not trying to win hard enough, for my liking. Uh, but so those cards, and then the other cards that allow you to just make Electromites uh, easily turn one. The Mythical Beast Package, as well as Curtain Razors. Uh, Curtain Razor is a card I'm actually not too big a fan of. Um, I just, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to cut for, like, the Dark Worm engine. Uh, you know, I was basically building the deck very last minute. I literally just, like, threw the deck together um, and played. I love the Mythical Beast engine, though. Like, the Mythical Beast engine is actually just wild. 
uh, because like it's just a free summon with either Jackal into an open board, uh, or like if you have multiples, like Basilisk just makes that uh, really good because it just turns it into an upstart goblin. Um, if you're trying to dig for outs to cards as well, like Basilisk is also just cool, like because like if your hand is already suitable to make a bunch of um, a bunch of Electromites uh, without requiring the use of this into Jackal, you can just you know use this to shuffle back a card. Like say you open something like wonky like Chronograph plus Time Gazer. Um, and like uh, Curtain Razor plus uh, Mythical Beast Cerberus, like this really just fixes that hand. Because you didn't really need the Time Gazer, and you'd like to make the, the Chronograph, you know, live again, so you're able to, you didn't really need the Cerberus Summon because the Chronograph could be made live, um, and the Time Gazer is just doing nothing in your hand, so you can Normal Summon that, make Electromite off of like Curtain Razor and Time Gazer, and then use this to just put the Time Gazer back and then pop the Chronograph out of your scale. Uh, so like, there's a lot of cool plays like that, like, this is definitely, I think, is the correct package. Like, I know there's people that aren't playing this, but I feel like this is way too correct. Uh, like, specifically with the Basilisk. Like, if you're just playing, like, if you're just playing this, or if you're playing two Jackal King, like, that gets kind of ignorant. It gets kind of wild, but Basilisk just really fixes so many problems. Uh, it fixes so many things that the deck is uh, currently lacking on. And then Curtain Razor, like I said, I'm not really sure about this, uh, about this card in general, because it's... A card you really don't want to see in multiples, but if you do see it in multiples, that's still an Electromite, I guess. But, like, you want to be making Electromites with, like, Magician cards, not just normal summoning this. Uh, or if you're, like, making it with a non-Magician card, you want it to be a card that can replace itself, like Dark Worm, where it normal summons and gets you a search. Uh, this card's just kind of wonky. Uh, it was it was good. It was good because you just, you know, freely special summon it. That's broken. Uh, but I feel like Dark Worm and Gate Zero might be better in the spot uh, for these. And uh, certain results from YC Atlanta are also leaning me more towards indicate uh, that being the correct indication. But last two monsters in the deck are just two copies of Ash Blossom. I didn't want to play a deck without hand traps in it, uh, but I also didn't want that many hand traps. Uh, this could probably get up to three, maybe, or maybe even just play like ogres in their place. I'm not sure, uh, but I did really like it. The reason there's specifically two is because of a side deck theory that I'll get into uh, later. Uh, there's a reason there's only two, um, and also because of uh, like probability theory of opening, you know two cards that aren't combo pieces in this 40 card deck um uh it increased to a point where i was uncomfortable with it with the third ash in it but with uh two ashes it was pretty fine uh but that's all the monsters that's 33 monsters um and then going into spells two copies of allure one copy of upstart goblin two copies of duelist alliance and star pendulum graph and then the only trap i played was uh time pendulum graph uh, now these these are just deck thinning cards. Uh, allure is definitely not better than Desires because Desires is a plus one. Allure is a straight one for one, especially in this build where like I'm just uh, I'm not playing any cards like Dark Worm that would get me a free search that I could then lure away. But basically, I looked at it this way of like uh, my hand my deck has a lot of duplicate cards in it like Curtain Razor and duplicate magicians like Harmonizing that don't really do a lot in multiples. Um, and like you could draw into time gazers, uh, and like just not really want those in your hand and stuff uh, So allure kind of just helps you hand sculpt it lets you like fix that and then upstart just makes the deck inherently more consistent Now these cards the two duelist alliance the one star pendulum graph and the one time pendulum graph These are cards that a lot of people have basically cut uh, From a lot of the more popular lists. I felt like time pendulum graph was way too good not to play Star pendulum graph uh, unless your hand is just really strange star pendulum graph is almost always you know live because Chronograph popping for Time Gazer or Astrograph popping for Stargazer and then making Electromite triggers this, uh, which is huge. Like, that lets you get to, like, a Wisdom Eye, which really heavily extends your scope of play um, with what you're able to do with your first Electromite, which is always super important. And then uh, the two Duelist Alliances are just so, like, you can, like, open, like, two of any of these except for Double Alliance, and you can just get the other one. Like, Time Pendulum Graph is really good in slow grinding games. It's also really good in the Mirror because, like, you're just backing up your board of, like, three interruptions with this. Is just really good, uh, but then the uh, the Duelist Alliance is just you know to get to Star Pendulum Graph really because Pendulum Graph this is actually like a combo card so like you can open any one of these cards any one of these three and it's like you basically just open another combo piece. Uh, but if you open any two of them, as long as it's not double Duelist Alliance, then you get this for the combo piece, and then this turns into just another interruption. So it's usually really good for you. Um, I just felt like these cards were way too good not to run. Uh, in some capacity, even though I am playing the deck very, very combo oriented, but so the extra deck uh, definitely three Electromite. Uh, you should definitely be playing three. Uh, if you get cherries, whatever, like playing two so that you can play an, another extra deck card just so that, like cherries hurts you less is uh, probably just incorrect. Uh, play three of this card because you make three of it like every single turn one where you're comboing off. Um, 
Like, it's actually just wild. Or at least play three, because even if you're not playing this sort of build, where, you're, like, you're popping off a lot and, like, making three every turn one, if you're just doing a regular, like, build, it usually makes two turn one. You want the third for the follow-up. <laughs> like, you definitely want to be playing all of them that you can. But then the other links that I'm playing are Underclock Taker, Proxy Dragon, Try Get Wizard, and Firewall. Not playing Zephyr Metaltron, not playing Saryuja. Um, all of the plays that I can make Saryuja seem to be just a waste of resources. Uh, this deck goes, you know, very large. Uh, this deck has a lot of plussing by itself. And trying to draw and dig into cards with a Saryuja doesn't really fit the bill of what this deck is trying to do, especially considering, like, the only cards you'd be digging for are, like, Alliance, Star Pendulum Graph, and Time Pendulum Graph. Um, and, like, you can just dig for those with a lure anyway, like, because you draw a card off the first Electromite draw, and then if your hand was good enough to make Electromites and do your play, you're holding the Allure of Darkness until you thin your deck and do all that, and then you can Allure and draw into those. So, like, it's pretty easy uh, to do things like that. Uh, but these are all necessary for like specific combos um, and also these all fulfill specific requirements of like you can actually summon trigate like with firewall next to it with proxy dragon next to it and with underclock taker above it like with a vortex and a, a hope harbinger that are able to be over here because you summoned electromite over here first and so you were able to summon it over there and then start working on the other side of the board um so like these this is actually like a thing you can do like you can actually make this trigate live um and i did that a lot of times uh turn one so actually making like trigate live with vortex with harbinger um like it's actually it's really cool uh but for fusions i play two starving venom and one uh, odd eyes vortex uh i did kind of miss the third starving venom but i figured it's not needed for turn one so i'll just be ignorant and not play the third i decided to play ignister over it and i literally like made ignister every single game uh going uh every single game where I had a turn three and my opponent didn't scoop. I had to make Ignister to clear stupid things. Uh, but then Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon, Time Star Magician, and number 38 Hope Harbinger, Titanic Galaxy for Xyz Monsters. I'm not playing Naruto because every time Naruto comes up, there's usually just a better play, like making more cards that get you more pluses and stuff like that. I could consider... I've, I've thought about playing it, but like the thing is like you're making Harbinger anyway. The only thing... like. You don't really need the Naruto at that point. Um, it's it's just really weird. It's like the card that I made the least in all of my testing with Magicians, even with Ove Dragon at three and Chronograph at three. Like I just don't make that card uh, because everything else is just better. Like you make Titanic Galaxy, that's better than Naruto. You make Vortex, that's better than Naruto. Um, you make a live Trigate, that literally is better than Naruto because there's a firewall next to it that can also bounce a card. Like just making Naruto is just not really that good. Um, and it just loses so hard to like purple poison uh, because like you just you have a monster that like the thing with Titanic Galaxy is you summon it in defense mode so they can't crash purple poison because you just redirect the attack over to Titanic Galaxy and they just ping into its defense and takes damage and that way like they just can't out your stuff by normal summoning purple poison but that's something Naruto doesn't prevent uh, so there's there's a lot of reasons why I don't play Naruto um, the card that's in the deck over Naruto is the clear wing like this card is actually just a game ender um, especially like through like uh, like in more grindy games, and then Ignister also for the same reason. Uh, like it's really good in the mirror when you're grinding in the mirror, and it's just it's a card that's like can instantly win the game when it hits the board. Especially considering that if you're in a grind game, you usually haven't made these yet, so like you can just make Ignister, throw it into some throw it into cards, see what they have. If it gets negated, cool. Summon this, copy Ignister. This one got negated, cool. Summon this, copy Ignister. <laughs> Like, it just gets really cool and really ignorant with what you can do with this deck. This deck actually just has such a super high ceiling. But, anyway, because this was a deck that I did actually play at an event, I'm going to give you a side deck. Because, normally I don't do side decks on deck profiles because they're very event specific for me. This side deck, uh, it, it was just very weird. I just randomly picked some good cards out and threw them together. Um, the only card in the side deck that had actual theory behind it, um, which I hinted at earlier, was Passing Glider. Uh, every time I had a sided game where I knew I was going first... I took out the Ash Blossoms from my main deck and sided in two of these because Ash is not a combo card. I do not need it going second or going first because my deck, if operating at full capacity or even half capacity, is still putting out two interruptions. Um, so, like, Passing Glider just becomes better than Ash because Ash is not a combo piece. This is, and you just get a special summon of this. Uh, this also just low key kind of plays around barrier as well. So, uh, the problem is though, like, you have to control, there has to be no monsters on the field in general. So, like, your opponent can't have a monster. And you special this, so that's why it only goes in when going first. That's why I'm not main decking the card, because in theory, you would main deck a card that's just a free special summon for a pendulum monster. Uh, but um, 
but basically, like, I just put this in to be basically the fourth and fifth copy of Curtain Razor, essentially, when I'm going first, because Ash is not needed in the deck. Uh, the rest of the side deck was uh, just a bunch of cards that I thought were really good. Um, I only, I didn't intend to, like, play long in the event, so I didn't really care what my side deck looked like. So don't ask, why is this here? Could you make this better by swapping out for this? I literally didn't care. I threw together a side deck. I was like, I don't want to deal with my opponent having a vortex in the mirror. So I sided these kaijus in and I can summon it to my own side of the field. Um, I don't like back row. So I guess I'll play Denko Seca and Cosmic Cyclone. I don't like monsters going second in the mirror match. I need something to just take a negation away. So I guess I'll play Raigeki alongside the kaijus. And then I don't. if I'm playing against some deck that gets hurt by barrier, I want to put this in going first instead of... Uh, instead of having like Ash Blossoms in my deck or something else like that or like if this is more auto win than the Duelist Alliance engine is I'll put these in uh, Like it's it was so simple like it's it's literally just the most generic side deck I think I've ever built the only side deck card that actually has a real theory behind it that I was actually like super just you know This is cool as shit was this card um, Because I was like what do I do when I side out these hand traps? I put I side out hand traps and put like no cards in that advance my engine and the only thing I could probably do is like put in D barrier, but like in certain matchups, like against Trickstar, that this card does nothing. I don't really want to side in Cosmic Cyclone because it's not a combo card, but this card is. So hell yeah, and that's the only card that had theory in my side deck. Um, if I played three Ash in the main deck, there would 100% three be three passing gliders in my side deck because I want a one for one swap them out. Uh, but so that's the entire deck list essentially. Uh, if you have any uh, questions about the main and extra deck in particular, I, like I said, the side deck was literally thrown together, had no theory behind it, except for passing glider. But if you have any, uh, the main deck had like a lot of like on the spot theory, and it worked out so well. Like the deck was operating so well in terms of uh, like how consistently it was opening hands. The only round that I lost was round one, and I only lost it because I won the die roll. I went first. And like I said, I had been up for like a day and a half beforehand. I didn't sleep the night before uh, the uh, day one of the YCS either. And so like my opening hand was Oaf Dragon, Duelist Alliance, um, a Black Fang, and uh, a Mythical Beast Master Cerberus, uh, game three. Uh, going first game three. And I was like, I need to play around Ash Blossom. So I scaled my Oaf Dragon, activated Duelist Alliance, uh, searched Tar Pendulum Graph, and then looked at my hand and I was like, wait, my only other monster is a Black Fang? and the Master Cerberus, and I can't use the Master Cerberus for Jackal because I have the Oaf Dragon in my scale, so I just literally destroyed myself um, because I hadn't slept. I was literally just like dozing in and out of reality for a little while. Uh, that didn't, you know, sort of fix itself until after round two when I got some coffee in my system. Uh, but basically, that's the deck. <laughs> I really like it. I'll probably end up playing this specific build maybe with some minor tweaks on a future live stream. Uh, just to test this further, I do plan on you know trying to pick up uh, actual cards to own so I can play this. Um, I, this is above and beyond the best deck, um, like obviously, and I think that I definitely want to be playing the best deck. Uh, World Chalice is just unfortunate. It's really fun. It's a fun project. It's like a good tier two to tier three ish deck. Like it's good rogue, but it's very bad for YCSs because it's horribly inconsistent in longer rounded tournaments and you have to get lucky a lot more i'd rather play a deck that does just as many broken things as world chalice does but it's just an inherently better deck uh for the time being just because also i just love pendulums but anyway that's it for this video again if you have any questions comments concerns or whatever leave them in the comments down below i'll do my best to address them thanks for watching as always check out the links in the description if you want to connect with me on other forms of media like twitch or uh, facebook stuff like that if you want to support me directly patreon link is also in the description i'd be greatly appreciative if that's something you wanted to do to help support the channel but other than that as i've already said thanks for watching thanks for your time as usual guys like comment subscribe and take care i'll see you in the next video but now that the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertsen, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else supporting in the lower tiers. You guys help make what I'm doing here continue to be possible. You have my eternal gratitude, as always, and you're forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.